Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. I'm Flori Lazier, President and CEO of Corporate Council on Africa, and I'm pleased to have everyone join us here today for CCA's US Ethiopia Investment Dialogue. I hope that everyone is staying safe and in good health under these uh, challenging times. Um, we are at CCA continuing to provide the kinds of access and connections for our members and many, many stakeholders um, to key business people and leaders uh, from around the continent as well as here in the US. So let me start by uh, welcoming and thanking um, His Excellency Dr. Eo uh, uh, Tekalin, State Minister of Finance uh, for accepting our invitation to participate in today's program. Uh, Dr. Eob is a longtime friend of CCA. I've had the honor of knowing him quite some time myself, um, and it's such a privilege to host him this morning. As many of you know, CCA focuses on promoting business and investment between the United States and the nations of Africa. For over 27 years, CCA has successfully connected private sector leaders and government officials to enhance US-Africa business, trade, and investment. We are delighted to host the US-Ethiopia Investment Dialogue today to advance the US-Ethiopia business relationship. Over the past decades, Ethiopia's economy has experienced tremendous growth. Since April 2018, the government of Ethiopia under Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has made significant political and economic reforms, such as the liberalization of key sectors and launched a process for the privatization of Ethiopia's state-owned companies, such as Ethio Telecom, Ethiopian Electric Power, Ethiopian Sugar Corporations, and other state-owned enterprises. These reforms, combined with the declaration of peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea, have improved the business climate and attracted significant interest from regional and global investors, including many CCA members. With a population of over 110 million and the IMS pr prediction that Ethiopia will continue to be the fastest growing economy in Sub-Saharan Africa, Ethiopia is an appealing business and investment destination. Recognizing Ethiopia's economic and political progress and the growing American business interest in Ethiopia, CCA has hosted several events highlighting Ethiopia's advancements. Last year, CCA collaborated with the Millennium Challenge Corporation and Citibank on the Ethiopia Partnerships Forum, which was a two-day summit session discussing economic and financial growth in Ethiopia. CCA also hosted a high-level dialogue with Ambassador Fitz and Morega, emphasizing trade and investment ties between the U.S. and Ethiopia. We are delighted to continue the conversation on U.S.-Ethiopia business and investment relations. Today's investment dialogue will discuss Ethiopia's ongoing economic and political reforms and the opportunities for increased U.S. investment anticipated from those reforms and the privatization that is underway in key sectors. We look forward to hearing from Minister Eob on the liberalization process, including for the telecommunications and other major sectors. Now, we are also honored that Ambassador Fitza Morega, Ethiopian ambassador to the US, has joined us today to provide some welcoming remarks. We look forward to hearing them from him. Before I introduce Ambassador Fitza and turn it over to him, I did want to go over some housekeeping rules for our question and answer session that will take place later in the discussion with Minister Eo. Please use the Zoom question and answer function to send us your questions. We will only take questions from those who have provided their name and their affiliation. So don't forget, I know it gets interesting and you put your questions in, but please don't forget to say who you are and who you're with and we will make every effort to respond to your questions, time permitting. Thank you, and now it is my very great pleasure to invite Ethiopian Ambassador to US, Ambassador Fitza Morega, to provide welcome remarks. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Flori. Thank you so much for this 
I am the introduction. Uh, I'm honored to be here again. Excellency uh, uh, Dr. Rio Katale, State Minister of Finance of Ethiopia, Ms. Flori is the President and CEO of Corporate Council on Africa, and with participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to you all, and good afternoon to those who are joining us from Ethiopia. I'm very pleased to be here with you today best business and investment opportunities in Ethiopia and the United States. Before I start my remarks, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Ms. Flori is a president and CEO of Corporate Council of Africa for organizing this dialogue. Thank you, Flori, for your continued support to strengthen trade and investment relations between the U.S. and Ethiopia, the U.S. and Africa. A great honor to work with you as you are the leading voice and long-time champion in promoting U.S. Africa business relations here in the U.S. I also would like to thank Dr. Yu for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us today with a very important and timely team in U.S. Ethiopia investment area. Being the former commissioner of the Ethiopian Investment Commission before my appointment as ambassador to the U.S., this discussion on investment is very close to my heart. I also would like to thank Mr. Aswale Mayo for his help in organizing this forum. As an Ethiopian diaspora, we appreciate his role serving as a bridge and linking his company to his business opportunities in Ethiopia. As most of you know, before the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic, the Ethiopian economy has been one of the fastest growing in Africa, and it's, it has been registered close to double digit growth during the past 15 years. With a population of 110 million, Ethiopia is the second most populous nation in Africa and one of the five largest economies in the continent. The Ethiopian government has made significant infrastructure, especially on uh, roads, railways, cargo facilities, air and clean energy, airports and clean energy, including wind, solar, and geothermal resources to support the development. The main goal of supporting this. Ease of clean The Grand Ethiopia Railway System, the largest hydro dam in Africa, will generate 15,700 gigawatt hour of electricity a year when completed in the next couple of years. More than 20 industrial parks and four agro projects are being developed by the government and private investors with the aim of making the country manufacturing hub in the region. During the global spread of the pandemic, the Ethiopian government has taken immediate action to control the spread of the virus. Declared a state of emergency, limited international flights, closed all land borders, imported 14 days of quarantine and testing for the international travelers, shut down schools, and implemented strict regulations for large social gathering. These strict measures have undoubtedly helped to slow down the spread of the virus. While the health consequences of the COVID pandemic have been relatively less devastating than expected in the African continent, combination of international travel restrictions, global supply chain disruptions, and domestic lockdowns have significantly impacted economic activity in the continent. According to a recent World Bank report, the past cult starting the road to recovery, economic growth in Sub-Saharan Africa is expected to fall to negative 3.3 percent by in putting the continent in a very challenging when we look at the economic impact of the pandemic in the Ethiopian context, although the growth of the economy has slowed as expected, the trajectory remains positive. According to a recent report by the Prime Minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, here in the eight years that ended in just July 2020, has registered 6.1% economic growth. Commendable achievement is attributed primarily to the various economic reform programs that are being implemented in the country Apple with close fiscal monitoring, as well as the swift and comprehensive action that the government has taken in the spread of the virus. We may be hearing a lot more from His Excellency Dr. Yob about this. Despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, the European government has continued its commitment to implement the widespread economic reform and liberalization program that have been boldly launched by Prime Minister Abe. Just to give you some ambitious homegrown economic reform program in that 
controlling the business climate and encourage private sector to invest in private sectors where the country has competitive advantage. The national ease of doing business initiative led by Prime Minister to create a transparent regulatory framework and eliminate bureaucratic red tape. Comprehensive privatization and liberalization program to encourage private sector participation in several sectors of the economy, including telecommunications, web projects, and end life. Public private partnership program launched to enhance the role of the private sector in the country in the economy developed and improved the quality of public investment, particularly in energy and infrastructure. Lastly, but not least, a new investment programmation has been enforced, enhan enhanced, which relaxes several entry barriers and replaces a restrictive positive list with a narrow negative list, thereby opening up several sectors of the economy of foreign investors. As I mentioned earlier, this economic reform and development have significantly contributed the relevance of the Ethiopian economy, enabling it to withstand the impact of COVID-19. Ethiopian airlines intuition during the pandemic is also and has been the catalyst for continued export uh, during the pandemic. And is one of the only few uh, air aircraft, I mean, air airlines that stayed on the side. I will not be dwelling on this detail as it will be further discussed by who is one of the leading aspects of the reform program that are being implemented in Ethiopia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's clear that we are facing unprecedented global challenges due to the pandemic. However, it's not the time to pull back, time to move forward with a renewed drive. Although the spread of the virus has several effect, several affected some sectors such as travel, tourism, and entertainment, has also opened up big opportunities in several other sectors. We have witnessed the digital technology in education, healthcare, telemedicine, e government, mobile financing, electronic commerce, and several other sectors, including the health sector, is required, uh, become crucial to the day to day lives and the status of business operation. So now it's time to invest in these technologies to enable us to defrog in the use of digital technology and mitigate the health, social, and economic impact of the pandemic. Finally, I want to emphasize that Ethiopia is open for business, and it is open for business. Present, travel restrictions are lifted, and appropriate safeguard mechanisms are put in place to curb the spread of the virus. Given the updated business opportunities available for U.S. business in manufacturing, agriculture, uh, healthcare, mining, energy infrastructure, and several other sectors, including healthcare, healthcare, pharmaceutical manufacturing as well. I invite you all to explore the process. Now is the time to invest in Ethiopia. I assure you that our embassy is fully committed to providing you with all the necessary support that you may need to explore these proposals. Let me stop here. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Ambassador Fitzsim, for your excellent remarks and especially for um, making clear to our CCA members and many others on this call of your uh, uh, openness and willingness to help them as they uh, look to come to Ethiopia if they're not already there and if they are to expand what they're doing um, and supporting uh, the government. Uh, again, thank you. Let me introduce now uh, Diane Wilkins, who is the founder and CEO of uh, Development Finance International. Um, DFI, she has for 30 years or more uh, been crowding in investment into emerging markets all across um, uh, the world and especially in Africa um, and uh, uh, has uh, personally contributed um, to um, uh, some of the work that's being done now uh, in Hawassa, uh, the Hawassa um, uh, Industrial Park. And so um, uh, I was privileged to be able to ask Diane, who is uh, also the co-chair of the Board of Corporate Council on Africa, to be a part of this important conversation with uh, Minister Eob. So let me turn it over to Diane uh, to introduce um, His Excellency the Minister. 
Diane. Thank you very much, uh, Flori. Good morning, good afternoon, and perhaps even good evening, since we have 300 folks um, who have dialed in from around the world. Um, His Excellency, um, Dr. Eob Tikalin will be with us this morning discussing uh, the investment dialogue and opportunities for US uh, companies and others. It's my privilege to introduce His Excellency. Dr. Eob is chairman of the board of the Ethiopian Public Procurement and Property Administration Agency, also the accounting and auditing board of Ethiopia. He serves as a member of the board of directors of the National Bank of Ethiopia, um, uh, Ethiopia Telecom, Ethiopia's Electric Power Corporation, and the Federal Housing Corporation. Previously, Dr. Eob was minister in charge of Ethiopia's National Planning Commission. He spent close to 20 years helping shape Ethiopia's economic and social development through various responsibilities within leading public, private, uh, supranational, national, multinational, and academic institutions, and has worked for various uh, government agencies, including the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Trade. Minister Eob also worked for a number of regional and international organizations, including UNECA, COMESA, UNCTAD, the World Bank Group, and the International Finance Corporation, as well as SGI Frontier Capital and other multinationals. Minister Eob holds a master's degree from George Washington University in Washington and his PhD from the University of Maryland, focusing on political economy. Minister Eob, the Corporate Council is excited to have this timely dialogue with you, and we thank you again for the opportunity. At this time, we look forward to your opening remarks. Thank you very much. And as you conclude, we'll come back with several initial questions and then open the floor uh, to those who have dialed in. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dan, for that uh, warm introduction. Um, and thank you, everyone, <clears throat> for tuning in today. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and, and good evening. Um, depending on where you are. I really want to thank uh, the Corporate Council on Africa and uh, Ms. Uh, Florizer in particular for uh, inviting me to this uh, panel. I'm pleased to join, to join you today with Ambassador Fiso Maraga. Um, I think <clears throat> you probably have been um, uh, observing what is going on in Ethiopia over the last uh, couple of years. It's really about an exciting and also a critical time for Ethiopia's transformation. Uh, last year, I remember uh, in, in October, I was speaking at a session uh, in London, a Financial Times African Forum, uh, titled Big Economy, Big Chains. I think that phrase still very much captures the Ethiopian economy today. Big economy undergoing big chain. For the last two years, the government of the Prime Minister of um, Prime Minister Abiy has launched broad reforms across the economic, social, and political fronts. We strongly believe uh, this is a critical juncture for Ethiopia's uh, transformation. On the political front, as you might have been following, we are fully liberalizing the political space for competition and dialogue. This has significantly widened the political space. In fact all political actors um, that are interested in Ethiopia, uh, some of which have been in exile for decades, are now back in town. And this has created the most dynamic uh, you know, political environment in Ethiopia. And at times, uh, a few challenges uh, remain, but generally uh, we are very, very pleased on how the political transformation is going. Uh, we, as you know, we've established an independent electoral commission and are currently working with diverse political parties to institute the rules of the game jointly. We were expected to have the first fair and free election in the country earlier this August, which was postponed due to COVID-19. We have currently relaunched preparations for elections to take place uh, sometime in 2021, uh, probably in mid-2021. This is very, very critical for Ethiopians because it's for the first time in Ethiopia's history that we are going to conduct a free and fair election and ensure that the ultimate power um, rests on the Ethiopian uh, public. But we believe uh, sustaining the gains from the political reform necessarily uh, requires uh, working deeply on the economic front as well. So in that regard, 
We have launched a, a very comprehensive homegrown economic reform agenda last year, which Ambassador Fusum has mentioned earlier on. Uh, as he, he clearly indicated, uh, we wanted to build on the past success. Ethiopia has managed um, to achieve a robust double digit economic growth for more than 10 years, um, 10 to 15 years, and significant achievement on the social uh, reforms as well. So we wanted to make sure this uh, economic achievement is sustained and actually put on a, on a sustainable path. In that regard, at the core of our homegrown economic reform is ensuring significant private sector participation in the best uh, economy. In that regard, uh, we are focusing on moving from debt financing, um, as we've done in the past, to more equity financing. We're also rebalancing the role of the government and the private sector in the economy by encouraging more private sector participation. And also, we are unlocking new growth potentials in, in many sectors, in agriculture and manufacturing, also looking at uh, areas such as tourism, mining, uh, ICT digital economy that have received limited or no attention in, in the past. In fact, as part of our reform, we're looking at macro, sectoral, and also structural reforms to make sure the economy is fully on sustainable path. As part of the macro reform, for instance, the National Bank of Ethiopia is undertaking sweeping reforms in the financial sector. We're also working to establish the country's first stock market. The vibrant private sector is starting to emerge and our companies are ready to be listed in the stock exchange, which hope will come soon uh, in about a year's time. We're also moving towards a more market-based forex valuation. I know this is um, a question that many investors ask, but we really are overhauling our forex regime. As part of our reform, we want to make sure foreign currency shortage would not be the defining feature of um, the Ethiopian economy. At the structural level, we are overhauling the investment regime to ease the process of doing business in Ethiopia. But it would be surprising to note that um, uh, we have made sweeping over 80 legal and administrative reforms uh, over the last year and a half alone. Our goal is uh, to join the top 100 countries in the World Bank's doing business um, ranking. Can go on, but on the sectoral front as well, many opportunities emerge. We are still focusing on manufacturing. Um, as you know, Florida, we have a strong US presence in many in manufacturing sector, Dow Chemical, GE, uh, PVH, um, Procter & Gamble, and others are, are now uh, entering into the manufacturing sector. But also, as part of our opening up, we hope there will be significant US presence in the tourism and, and mining sector. Uh, the mining sector, we feel uh, we, we are endowed with various geology that endows us with a wide variety of minerals, uh, from gold and platinum to metals and, and gemstones. Um, but also, on the tourism sector, uh, we feel Ethiopia's tourism destination have not been explored at all, uh, so we are now keen to tap into this potential. In fact, to this end, the government is taking the lead to expose uh, the country's tourism potential as seen in new parks in Addis Ababa, Unity in Toto and Shagar Parks, which provide a purview of the country's history, nature and hospitality. The prime minister has this notion is started from, from the palace, moved on to Addis, and we're now developing a number of tourist sites across the country. These are more of pilot projects to showcase the potential um, of Ethiopia's uh, the tourism industry, but uh, there is more, more um, to do, and I, I really want to encourage you uh, next time you plan your travel. Uh, I hope it will be uh, pretty soon um, that you look at Ethiopia as a potential um, tourism uh, destination. Um, overall, um, uh, we, we believe because of this economic reform, the private and public investment projects um, can, can, can be considered. We have uh, overhauled uh, our PPP regulation. I can come back to this uh, later if need be. Uh, but I really want to encourage all participants today to, to look at Ethiopia anew. Uh, Ethiopia is going to be a breakthrough country. We are going to make it. We are going to be the biggest economy, one of the biggest economies in Africa. As part of our 10-year plan, we envisage to be the top uh, five economy, but, but actually we look beyond. Uh, we hope um, if we ensure this reform goes through, um, this, this could be a formidable, a formidable force for peace uh, and regional prosperity going beyond uh, Ethiopia. 
Let me stop there, uh, Flori, and, and uh, I'll be happy to discuss if there are any specific issues to be discussed. Thank you. Mr. Minister, thank you very much. Ethiopia and uh, you continue to excite uh, and should uh, really intrigue those who have not made a visit yet to Ethiopia or put it in their plans. Uh, your commitment over the years and through your one-stop shop at the Ethiopian Investment Commission uh, has proven your dedication uh, to the mar to uh, investors. Let me start, um, so I thank you for your remarks. Let me start with um, some questions that um, we have put together at the Corporate Council. And I also want to remark that CCA has been a partner for Ethiopia in its journey to this point. And I know we're quite excited to continue in this journey as you achieve the ambitions you've set forth. Um, Ethiopia has experienced tremendous growth over the last 20 years, as you remarked, and with the last two years, your focus on building institutions and policy reforms uh, doubled down on the prospects ahead. Could you share with us some major highlights regarding business and FDI reforms that may particularly incentivize U.S. investment? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Joanne. That's a very good question. Um, as I said uh, earlier, at the core of our reform is ensuring significant private sector participation in the campus economy. To that end, um, we are actually overhauling institutions. For instance, um, our reinvestment law has taken a completely uh, new approach, different approach. We wanted to completely overhaul the investment governance structure. We are not taking piecemeal approach, rather overhaul the entire system. For instance, uh, as opposed to the previous uh, you know, positive listing uh, of investment uh, types, we've moved to what we call negative listing. Previously, uh, there are only few areas that were open for investment, uh, but now, what we are doing is um, we have actually followed a negative list where we have identified a few areas uh, that we have not opened up, but the rest of the sectors are uh, wide open. So in that regard, sector that, that were not really on the list before, um, logistics, um, aviation, telecom, energy from generation to distribution, um, cement uh, production, I can go on, but many of the sectors are now open for uh, private sector engagement also. As part of instituting international trade, we have seriously taken our interest in WTO and, and we have resumed our discussion uh, to advance the WTO accession. In fact, we have set a very ambitious timeline of uh, completing the accession process uh, by uh, 2020. And then these reforms generally are, are really uh, yielding significant um, uh, fruits already. For instance, uh, because of our new approach to investment, we are encouraging PPP and we have put in place a very comprehensive uh, PPP framework, and we have encouraged significant private sector investment. For instance, one of our new PPP uh, agreement, which was signed um, uh, late 2019, uh, has offered one of the lowest tariffs in Africa as far as uh, solar energy is concerned. Uh, finally, I want to note that because of this reform, already um, it is a top FDI receiver in East Africa, despite. COVID challenge, even when FDI generally is, is decreasing across uh, the world and in the region as well, Ethiopia is still tops at, uh, as a foreign uh, FDI destination country. Thank you, Mudia. Okay, thank you very much. Did I understand uh, WTO accession could be finalized yet this year? Well, we, we wish it would be finalized this year, but as you know, it's a very complicated process. Uh, right. I would really encourage uh, our US counterparts uh, who are joining us today to work with us. I mean, from our end, we're really uh, ready to advance this negotiation. Uh, but actually, the, the most uh, sensible timeline would be 2022. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for clarifying for me. Um, could you, could you expect? Liberalization plans, some of which you've just could you update um, all on the call on where things are on some of the key Ethiopian sectors, including telecommunications? 
Um, further to that is privatization, privatization of Ethio Telecom, the first in line, and what may be timing and planning for other sectors. Thank you so much, um, um, Diane, for that question. Uh, I would be very happy to provide an, an overall update. Um, look, as part of our homegrown economic reform, um, and as I said, as uh, our effort to increase significant private sector participation, we have looked at all key sectors and we've made a political decision to open up all these uh, key sectors. And then when it comes to how to do it, uh, the Minister of Finance uh, was mandated by the council to take the lead and we've been working over the last couple of months in developing sector specific strategies, telecom, sugar, energy, industrial parks, logistics in general, railway. So what we've done is we've taken a much broader sectoral approach and, and on telecom for instance, we say, what would be the best way to build a strong and vibrant digital economy in Ethiopia? And the answer to that was, well, we need to have some, some competition. We also need to strengthen the income band. And that is why, why we have come up with a two plus one market structure where we say the telecom sector will be open for potential two new entrants and the incumbent will be privatized partially uh, with uh, uh, another partner joining. So as to the process, um, so we follow the same process for all sectors. As to which one is advancing, I guess telecom and, and the sugar industry are really advancing pretty well. On telecom, uh, we have finalized the uh, valuation for the privatization process and, and we've hired um, uh, what we call the um, transaction advisor, uh, which would be leading the transaction process. Uh, and then on the liberalization side, we have completed the evaluation of the spectrum as soon as part of the opening up, we will be selling a license. Uh, in, a, in a sense, um, uh, the spectrum will be um, offered to potential new entrants. So we have finalized that valuation exercise. And we are uh, now doing the final leg of consultation with the public uh, to just bring everybody on board. So the prime minister has initiated uh, a three-legged consultation, one led by Ministry of Finance, one led by the telecom um, incumbent, and one led by the regulator. And finally, uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be going into full-fledged transaction activity, both on the privatization and the regulation. So I encourage um, all in attendance and beyond to to broadly participate in this um, area. And it's not only on the licensing and privatization aspect, but generally on the digital sphere, we feel there is significant room for private sector participation on data center building, for instance, or on other uh, value added services in telecom. So we, we encourage strong private uh, sector participation from the diaspora, the Egyptians living abroad, and also uh, the, the foreign direct investment. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. That was uh, quite comprehensive. May I ask in a follow up and somewhat related to, to the first couple of questions, as US and other investors are uh, looking towards uh, foreign investment in Ethiopia, what types of policies uh, does the Ethiopian government intend to implement that would both facilitate and protect that investment? Thank you, Dan, uh, for that question. Um, clearly, <clears throat> we have always had a very strong investment promotion and uh, investment after care institutions. I mean, generally, over the last years, uh, we have looked at promoting foreign direct investment seriously and to these and creating institutions, uh, especially the institution you mentioned, Dan, early on, EIC, the Independent Investment Commission. Um, is really working as one stop service for all foreign direct investment. Um, I, I want to take the opportunity again to thank Ambahel Berfusum for an excellent institution he left behind. He did a wonderful job in, in overhauling that institution and putting a, strength, a strong team behind. So EIC um, is, is uh, really the entry point for all investors. But EIC, you should know, is supported by a very strong board. The investment board is chaired by the prime minister himself. Uh, it's not like any, any other board. Uh, and also, uh, the EIC has adopted a customer or account manager system to build lasting relationship and provide post-investment assistance to investors. Uh, and the one-stop shop service is working pretty well, so that investors are not 
uh, they don't necessarily need to knock at every door at every institution to finalize um, uh, the bureaucratic requirements. But generally, um, I think the way we are looking at investment is how do we, we uh, encourage more investments and in what areas? That is the approach we've taken. Um, what, two important things I want to note. One, uh, previously our investment approach had, had some limitations um, in terms of being inclusive or working with the local community I and mean, creating an environment whereby the local community can be uh, the integral part of any investment activity. We have corrected this. So now we want to make sure our investors uh, work hand in hand with local institutions, with local people, um, including the people that would be benefiting or affected by that investment activity. And also there is a high level council that the prime minister has established led by all regional presidents. We have 10 regions as you know, and two city states. Uh, so the two mayors and the 10 presidents are part of this council and following up investment issues in the Ministry of Finance uh, by the Fiscal Institution has also set up um, more of a council uh, that is called by the macro team in, in the Ministry of Finance so that we can closely follow up on questions of our investors and, and, and support them. But generally our investment uh, region is very supportive of foreign direct investment. Uh, the laws are... Um, strongly robust, uh, uh, but in terms of implementation of challenge, understanding some of the challenge, we have put in place a very strong uh, uh, and robust system. I just want to add one point if, uh, as far as the US investment is concerned. Um, DFC, as you know, um, after uh, it's reestablished as DFC, has taken a key interest in Africa. And because we wanted to make sure there is significant US investment, we have worked very closely with DFC. Um, we have signed some memorandum of understanding, uh, resolving some of the critical questions they had, including um, uh, issues of forex issues, um, uh, account opening, some regulatory issues uh, that they wanted to ask. Uh, you'll be surprised how far we have gone to to encourage DFC uh, to to foot a step in in in, in Ethiopia because. Um, the government strongly believes in U.S. capital partnership, and we see private sector participation as a sustainable way of fostering people-to-people uh, -people, uh, relations. Thank you, Ariane. So thank you very much. Um... The new engagement with DFC and the encouragement that that collaboration will bring for U.S. companies. So thank you. Um, if we could move to a remark you made, I think in your opening comments, you talked about the ambitious plan Ethiopia has in the Doing Business Initiative to improve the ranking, uh, which lags a bit uh, for Ethiopia in the Doing Business Report of the World Bank. Um, could you outline some of the major challenges you expect to face and how do you think you're going to go about uh, working through those challenges? Maybe a couple of those would be helpful. Thank you so much. Um, look, on, on Doing Business Initiative, we've taken this very seriously, I mean, largely not for its ranking, honestly. Uh, the rank is always good, it's the icing on the cake. But more importantly, because of our reform direction of making sure there is significant private sector participation in, in, in the Japan economy. So for that, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we've, we've made more than 80 reforms, um, uh, legal, and administrative processes. I mean, this is not easy, Rian. You can imagine uh, the work that went into, into this. Um, the prime minister himself has convened a number of meetings. He has tasked uh, ministers to lead this work. And accordingly, issues that needs to be reformed in many areas, in, in acquiring investment and business license, in business registration licensing, in construction electric permits, e-filing in, in, in payment procedures um, and in and, and many areas um, to make sure it is more business friendly. We have overhauled all these processes. Very encouraging results that we've seen now. For instance, uh, if you look at our customs procedure, we've gone online um, and, and, and many private sector participants, domestic and foreign are very happy about this. Uh, our tax system, um, uh, e-filing, uh, e-payment is advancing. As part of our digital um, 
economy, do all the effort we, we, we hope to do more here, but also we've really streamlined the investment licensing processes, uh, uh, you know, permit requirements. Uh, some of these things could have taken uh, weeks and months, but now easily accessible in days, very, very sweeping. Forms also are in the process of forming our commercial code. I mean, the code has actually been approved by, by the council after um, decades. I mean, this is a very old commercial court. Uh, so, and finally, uh, we have overall this as well. So, very encouraging uh, results, but we are not uh, happy because we want to make sure, as I told you, tech is considered um, the most uh, easy place to do business in the world for all businesses, domestic and, and, and foreign. So, we, we continue to work on this. Um, the challenges are, are multifold, but, but uh, given what we've achieved over the last year, I'm very hopeful that we can usher in more reforms and achieve uh, this ambitious plan to, to put it on the radar on, on, on investment climate. Well, th thank you. Let me build on uh, one of the changes recently, which was your change to uh, the currency. And what's been the impact of the currency change for monetary policy, particularly on the business businesses operating in Ethiopia, which have needed access to foreign exchange? Yeah, that's a very good question, Diane. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of um, the currency change, uh, we have carefully planned this, um, as probably have gathered uh, the macro team was uh, planning this for more than a year now. Uh, but um, it was managed um, carefully. We wanted to make sure it's done properly. Uh, so, and finally, when uh, we've launched this process, because we've prepared for it, it went very, very smoothly in about a month's time. Uh, very astounding numbers. More than 1.2 million people have opened up new accounts. More than 37 billion per has been deposited in just these new accounts alone. I mean, we're not talking about uh, other deposits from existing accounts. Phenomenal, phenomenal. If you look at um, the amount of deposit mobilization, if you compare the first three months of this, this fiscal year to last year, is an astounding 490% increment. Um, it really worked well because we have put all critical milestones ahead of time, uh, put the right regulatory framework in place, um, and the entire government machinery, the private uh, sector, the banks, and the, the, the larger public, to be honest. The public was very supportive of this reform um, because they felt um, um, there was a need to change uh, on, 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 on the money supply. Um, there is a significant amount of uh, uh, informal activity going on, uh, unaccounted for uh, uh, businesses, um, many that was probably not generated from, from legitimate economy activity. So we wanted to curtail this. We are very, very pleased with the outcome. Uh, this has increased the bank's liquidity overall, strengthened the financial system, uh, but would also be very much critical for overall Forex uh, regime. Because look, when you have enough amount of uh, uh, deposits, uh, banks can lend to exporters, exporters can then export and get foreign currency. Uh, so these are highly intertwined, you know, and we're very pleased uh, with the outcome of this reform. That's really remarkable, and so many uh, economic as well as social objectives attained as new entrants come into the banking system. So congratulations that that has gone so well. Um, I'm, I'm quite quite enthused about that. We have a couple questions. If I could turn to some from the uh, folks who have dialed in. Um, one, the overarching question begins with COVID, and um, might you comment on how the pandemic has affected the economy? Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, this is a, um, a critical challenge. You know, when um, um, the COVID pandemic emerged, um, as you know, the whole world panicked, uh, and we had two options. One, to panic um, and, and close everything, and two, to find a way to deal with COVID while protecting our economy. Uh, fortunately, under the prime minister's leadership, we chose the latter. And uh, we have put in place the right protocol to protect key sectors of the economy uh, while uh, protecting people's lives. So we had this mantra, 
protecting people's lives and people's livelihoods. And uh, it has worked very well there. Um, one, we've managed to pro protect businesses. We managed to protect livelihoods, for instance, uh, people would have been uh, out of job, but because of uh, a different uh, stimulus that the government has introduced, uh, private businesses managed to keep their employees intact. Uh, the banks have provided significant liquidity to businesses. And this all shows uh, on the results of, of uh, the last year's performance. Uh, in fact, despite the COVID challenge, uh, we managed to grow by 6.1 percentage point. Of course, we wanted to grow by 9%, that was the plan, but hey, you can't complain. I mean, uh, in all, under the, all these challenges, uh, we've, we've only shared about three percentage points. So we are really, really pleased with the outcome. But more importantly, w when you knock at everyone's door, um, because we moved out of that fear zone immediately and, and uh, worked on protecting the economy and protecting people's livelihoods, we've managed to minimize the impact of uh, COVID. So it also showed how resilient our economy is and how our reforms are, are deep put. So we are very pleased with the outcome and we will continue to, to, to uh, work on this front. For instance, on the first quarter performance, every indications are, are encouraging. Revenue, for instance, we have overperformed, 106 percentage points. Our export performance is, is super. Um, I can go on, but in terms of time, but I can tell you all key indicators are, are intact um, and we are pleased with how we are managing the economy despite COVID. Well, that's excellent and congratulations. That question I meant to mention was from Hamza Adam. Let me turn to another question. I think we have time maybe for two, maybe three more questions. This one from Ambassador Hank Cohen, who is president of Cohen and Woods. And he asked your excellency, what's your policy with respect to private investment in electric power generation? Uh, he has an American client that's invested in six electric power stations in Africa and is now looking at Ethiopia. Well, very good question, um, 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 Ambassador. Look, look, this is an area um, where we have identified as a critical area of reform and investment, energy, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, we have significant amount of uh, potential, both in hydro, solar, wind, and in any, in clear, but by the way, Ethiopia is 100% percent clean energy. Um, I don't know if anybody on the call can, can mention another country um, that would brag 100% clean energy, maybe a few, but, but we're, uh, I want to, to make a point of this. Um, so one of the reform areas is on, on energy sector. So we have opened up this sector. In fact, we are encouraging significant private sector participation in this. Um, so we'd welcome an investment either in generation of new plants or even in, in taking over some of the already existing projects, as long as uh, it makes sense. So we are approaching this um, uh, project by project. Um, there are a number of projects that have been identified that have started, but that have not advanced because of either lack of capital or because we are overstretched. So we would be shortly uh, coming up with clear roadmap on how we encourage uh, specific private sector participation in existing dams as well. But, but generally, uh, please note that this is an area that we strongly encourage private sector participation. And we'll be happy, the team would be happy to follow up on this and take on uh, uh, the interest of, of, of the company. Thank you. So perhaps uh, time for a final question. And to incentivize um, investment in manufacturing, of course, it's so important uh, for exports for Ethiopia as well and access to markets is everything. Uh, we noted the improvements uh, planned for the Mojo Dry Port funded by the World Bank and those connections lead through to Djibouti. Might you share your vision on ways these types of infrastructure investments position Ethiopia competitive and for increased investment? Thank you so much, Dan. That's uh, also one critical important area. As part of our homegrown economic reform, we've uh, uh, identified the logistics sector as key structural bottleneck. Uh, and to that end, um, we have developed a sector strategy um, on logistics sector. And what that strategy identified is unless we significantly enhance private sector participation in um, and the logistics sector uh, will not be able to overcome some of these logistics challenges. So to that end, 
we've opened up a number of areas for private sector investment. For instance, investors can uh, build their own dry ports or they can get into a JV with existing logistics operators um, or they can operate in, um, in, in part of a transport activity. Uh, so we've really opened up that sector broadly. So um, logistics sector is one of the new areas that is open for private sector investment. So I would encourage um, potential investors to look into that sector as well. Well, that leads, that leads then to a final question. I'm so pleased to have a moment to ask this. Of course, the challenges are managing debt burden. And I would appreciate your uh, vision and your insights on uh, how Ethiopia looks to that challenge um, if Chinese debt, multilateral debt, while continuing to incentivize and support the investments so necessary, both uh, social and hard infrastructure. Absolutely. Um, clearly, that's also a very important area of reform. Um, look, uh, what, because of uh, the previous economic model we have followed, um, uh, despite the significant achievements on, on overall economic growth, uh, the amount of debt burden, burden that we have accumulated was really significant. So one critical reform area for Prime Minister Abiy was, was one, uh, to completely halt any commercial loans. So in that regard, um, I mean, day one after the reform, uh, we freezed our commercial loans because uh, the debt burden was uh, increasing. We've also engaged in significant discussion with many of our partners uh, to restructure um, our existing debt stock. Um, and then, um, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have looked into new ways of, of financing our investment needs, private sector participation, PPP, uh, more private sector investment, um, encouraging privatization and private sector participation across a wide uh, spectrum of, of sectors. And that has um, worked very well. I mean, if you look at Ethiopia's overall debt stock, for instance, uh, it has decreased from about 31% of GDP last year to 25% of GDP this year. Phenomenal, six percentage points. Uh, I'm sure you understand how, how big this is. And um, as part of our homegrown economic reform, we also wanted to improve Ethiopia's overall um, the sustainability status from high risk to medium risk. And that is also progressing very well. We're working closely with other partners, the bank, the IMF, um, and, and as part of the IMF program as well, um, we, we have advanced um, uh, our debt sustainability uh, analysis and, and in fact, ushering in uh, significant um, yeah, reform in that area. So um, what, when you look at Ethiopia's balance of payment projections, um, you will see that not only will we be um, in a medium level stress and then probably over the course of three, four years, um, low level, but we should be actually able to borrow more at that point because our experts will be increasing significantly. Uh, because of our homegrown reform, we were working on key sectors to increase exports. Uh, for instance, I mean, just one example and I can, I can, I can end here. Um, coffee was uh, the main store of Ethiopian economy. But because of our revolutionary agriculture, uh, in, in a couple of years, avocado export from Ethiopia would, would overtake coffee, uh, something that was not on our export basket a few years uh, down the road. And we're working in different areas in that regard. So we should be able actually to borrow more, to invest more. And that's why uh, we are uh, happy our reform has worked and, and we are putting Ethiopia on a sustainable uh, growth path. Thank you. Thank you for such a forward, enthusiastic and very encouraging look and uh, remarkable effort and commitment. And thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. Let me turn back to Flori, if I may. Been a pleasure, thank you. Well, thank you all for joining us at uh, CCA's U.S. Ethiopia Investment Dialogue. I have to give a very special thanks to my uh, longtime uh, friend um, who uh, has just risen in the ranks uh, in, in the Ethiopian government, His Excellency Dr. Eob uh, uh, Tekelin, 
uh, State Minister of Finance, you have provided such a, um, a thorough uh, um, uh, overview of the opportunities now uh, in uh, Ethiopia. And um, we're just so pleased that we could host you. Um, uh, you mentioned something that uh, uh, touched my, 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 my mind. Uh, you said, uh, you know, you want to encourage Americans as the uh, markets are opening back up and we go beyond where we are presently on COVID, uh, Ethiopia as both an investment destination and a tourism destination. And it brought to mind wonderful trips that I had to uh, Lalibela and Aksum, um, in some of my many uh, trips to Ethiopia. And so we too are hoping um, that uh, people will um, uh, resume um, uh, traveling at some point and that Ethiopia will be uh, one of their destinations. Uh, let me also thank His Excellency Ambassador Fitzsimon Morega for providing um, such um, excellent welcoming remarks. And thanks of course to uh, Diane Wilkins, um, uh, for both serving on CCA's board and for the excellent way that she moderated uh, today's discussion. Uh, we at CCA are, are honored to host uh, this dialogue highlighting Ethiopia's recent economic developments and current economic policy reforms. Um, the government has made such great progress in the expansion of the Ethiopian economy and in creating policies and an environment conducive to economic growth and doing business there. Uh, today's informative session illuminated the ways in which the government will continue to liberalize and reform uh, its economy as Ethiopia continues to emerge as a promising actor in the global economy. CCA on our side will continue our work to further promote US Ethiopian economic and business engagement. And uh, let me just say, uh, I don't often do this and I should do it more that we are really privileged at CCA to have an incredible staff. Um, uh, my staff at, at, at CCA are really excellent and um, we are probably one of the only US business associations that have people on the ground. We have someone in Nigeria, someone in Kenya, and thankfully we have Asba Alamayu uh, who is uh, right there in Addis and uh, was instrumental in helping to secure uh, your agreement to uh, uh, speak with us today, Mr. Minister. Thanks again to all of you um, uh, for being here, to all of you who joined us. We apologize we were not able to get to all of the excellent questions, um, including those that uh, asked, for example, about how small businesses in sectors like uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and agriculture, what could they do? So we hope, Mr. Minister, that they'll have a chance to follow up with you um, uh, and find out more about how the smallest businesses uh, can also be a part of uh, uh, the transformation in Ethiopia. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Please don't hesitate to reach out to CCA, visit our website. Everyone, please stay healthy and safe and have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Rory. Thank you, everyone. Good morning to you all. I want to thank uh, uh, Flory, Diana, uh, Asfaw, and the rest of the team for this excellent forum. Um, uh, please take my word on this. I'll be happy to join you again whenever ah. the need arises. Um, it's our duty to to share with you um, some of these phenomenal things happening in Ethiopia. And uh, Flory, I'll take uh, you on this. Um, plan as much as possible to to come here physically because uh, you'd be surprised how much this in Ethiopia has changed. Probably even after your last uh, visit, we are working day and night to change the face of the nation. And we are happy with the progress and I hope uh, you can all join hands with us in uh, making it a breakthrough country. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much and we'll take you up on that, sir. <laughs> you all. Thank you. This is the song. Thank you all. And uh, I've been looking on some of the questions. Our embassy can facilitate for all, you know, your concerns. Thank you so much, Flore, again. Thank you, Excellency, Dr. Yo. And I am happy to see you again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everyone enjoy the rest of your day and please do stay safe.